And, um, and tell, you, tell you a little thought this morning, just a quick thought, very quick, and come back tonight, and I've got something uh, completely different. So look at Luke 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, he's talking to Peter, Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Everybody in here needs to see that. Satan desires to have you. The devil wants to ruin your life. And he'll do it too. He said, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he, this is Peter, said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Now, Everybody knows this story of Peter leading up to denying the Lord, don't we? Everybody know this story, right? Save you a little time here if you read your Bible and know that story. Peter denied the Lord. He was the man who said, not me, Lord, that'll never happen. And he wound up doing it. Now, I want to preach this morning on the subject, are you headed for a fall? Are you headed for a fall? We all hear stories of people, friends, fellows, com com uh, companions, and husbands, and wives, and business people, and, and uh, preachers, and athletes, and musicians that fall. Oh, did you hear about so-and-so? They had a, a great fall. Did you hear about so-and-so? Man, they found out they was in all kinds of corruption and lost their business. Did you hear about so-and-so? They found out he was doing some kind of drugs and he got fired and he don't know the place for that team. Did you hear about so-and-so? We hear about people all the time that fall. As a matter of fact, when you hear about uh, someone who falls, usually there are warning signs that preceded that fall that people, somebody should have noticed. Isn't that right? Because after somebody falls, everybody said, well, you know, I noticed that such and such happened, and I, and I wondered why they said this, or where, what, that, why that, that, I could tell a difference. There were warning signs leading up to the time when that person fought. When there's a shooter, when we see on TV, there's an active shooter at a college or, or somewhere, and they shot a bunch of people, and they, on these terrorist acts, you know what they do? They go back, and they get that person's computer, and they look at every site they've been on. They look at every message they've sent or received. And everybody says, right there it was. Those were all warning signs. Somebody should have picked up on it. Somebody should have noticed. I mean, this wasn't just this nice, wonderful schoolboy one day and a murderer the next. There were warning signs leading up to that uh, shooting and that activity. And nine times out of ten, if they get that computer... Uh, they'd find out that there was a lot of things leading up. It was plain to see, but it's too late. Same thing, probably. I, I thought about that, and I thought, man, I ought to preach on that. It, every time a Christian backslides or gets out of church, you could probably get your computer or your phone and go back a couple of months and say, yep, yep, somebody should have seen it coming. Look what he's been looking at. Look what he's been listening to. Look the message he's been sending or receiving. Amen right there, preacher? That's right. And so uh, Simon Peter here, he had some warning signs leading up to the time when he cussed and denied the Lord. Here's a, an old-fashioned Bible-believing preacher who was sitting out at a restaurant one night and said, blankety blank, I don't even know who that was. Now, how, how do you go from sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ and having to feed 5,000 people and watching dead people get up to over here cussing when you don't even know him? How do you get from that point to that point? It's easy. There's warning signs. Let's look at them just for a minute this, this morning and, and I'll let you go. Number one, Number one, you have, before a person falls, they have too much self-confidence. Too much self-confidence. We're living in a time when people say, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And, uh, and I understand you've got to have a certain amount of, of belief in your ability. To, I understand that. But that is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches Jesus said, without me, you can do what? 
Nothing. Nothing. So the Bible does not teach believe in yourself and you can achieve it. The Bible teaches through the Lord you can do anything you ought to do. That's what the Bible teaches. But there were warning signs. And Peter had too much self-confidence. The Lord looked at him that night at the, at the, at the last supper. He said, I tell you right now, one of you guys is going to deny me. And all of them went, oh my goodness. I imagine some of them thought, oh Lord, I hope that ain't me. Oh Lord, I hope that ain't me. Not Peter. He jumped up and said, not me, Lord. You might have to worry about these other fellows, but I'm your man. I'll be there. I'll ne and, and you gotta be careful about having this attitude of you have arrived. And it, listen, people, don't you ever, is everybody listening to me? Don't ever think that could never happen to me. Don't you ever think that. You're the next one on the devil's hit list. He's got his crosshairs on you right now. He looks for people that think, I've got this. I've, I, I've done, I, I saw those uh, compilation of uh, people who celebrated too early. And there was a guy, I think he was a Dallas Cowboy uh, football player. I think that one, saw two or three of them. And this guy somehow got, a, got an interception and they was playing somebody, I don't know who it was. And this guy, he intercepted the ball right, and he was home free. And he was running down the feel like this, and them fans started screaming. I mean to tell you, that place is going crazy. It got louder, and, and he got to thinking, I'm the hero. So he started doing a little jig. You know how they dance a little bit and celebrate, and he held, he's holding the ball out like, yes, here I go. And about that far before he crossed the goal line, some fella come behind him, knocked the ball out of his hand. And I mean, brother, he lost it. They lost on account of that. You know what that guy's problem was? Too much self-confidence. He thought, look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he made a fool out of himself in front of that whole crowd and half the world. There's another guy who was running one of them bicycle races, and he was way ahead of everybody, and he was coming around the last lap, and he's coming around like this, you know, and the fans started screaming, you've won, you've won, you've won. And you know how they'll throw up their hands? He threw up both hands on that bicycle like here I am the great and it started wobbling like this and the fool fell out down there like to kill himself and the second man come up and passed him up and won you know what happens too much self confidence there's another guy he, 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 he got to celebrate I don't, I don't think football players or basketball leaders should ever have to cheer for their self I don't think they ought to have to go like this, like worship me. I don't think they ought to have, I mean, if people want to cheer for you, they will if they don't quit crying. And, uh, and this guy, he coming in for a touchdown, he was wide open, and he was going to do some great thing and, and do like this and go, and turn a flip, you know, into the end zone. And he messed up and dropped the ball, and they lost. Now, ladies and gentlemen, life is full of stuff like that. About the time you think you're the best in town, about the time you think it would never happen to you, about the time you look down on your nose at other people and say, well, these other people might backslide, but not me, bless the Lord. I, I'm it, Lord. You, buddy, you, I'm, the, I'm the best one you got. You are headed for a fall, I promise you. The Bible is full of stories like this. David and Goliath, for example. You know, Goliath, you do understand that Goliath had a coat of mail. He had all that armor and everything. And ain't no doubt in my mind Goliath had a helmet. They had helmets that come around like that and, and steel in front of them. So you couldn't, all they, you could see their eyes. I believe, I can't prove this, but I believe Goliath had his helmet off and he was mocking David. And he kept saying, you can't hurt me. Get out of here, man. What's wrong with you? Go on, boy, before I feed you to the dogs. I, I make hamburger meat out of you. Now, go on, leave me alone. And old David come up there in the name of the Lord and knocked his brains out, buddy, and took that sword and cut his head off. You know why? He had too much self-confidence. Now, the truth is, Goliath was way stronger than David physically, but he relied on the Lord and he relied on himself. And look what happened. King Nebuchadnezzar, over in the book of Daniel, the Bible said he went out there that day and he looked at Babylon and he said, I want you to look at all this. Yes. Uh, athletes are bad for that. Preachers are bad for that. Business people are bad for that. Entertainers and movie stars are like, yes, I'm the great one. You better watch that having that attitude, people. You better stay low, I'm telling you. You better keep yourself humble. Uh, if you think you've got, if you've got too much self-confidence, you are headed for a fall. Don't ever say, I'd never do that. Don't ever say, one of my kids would never do that. Because you don't know what one of your kids is liable to do. We don't know what you'll, you don't know what you'll do. 
I heard Ted one day said, uh, said, what's the matter, Daddy? Don't you trust me? And Daddy said, no, I don't trust you. Your kids say, well, you don't trust me. Of course you don't trust them. They're, you don't trust yourself. You don't trust, you don't trust no flesh. You're, you're crazy if you trust them or you either one. We have to trust the Lord. So Simon Peter had too much self-confidence. Number two, he had a neglect of prayer. He had a neglect of prayer. You see, the Lord had them disciples out there that day before, before all this took place. And he looked down and he said, uh, you guys uh, watch and, while I go over here and pray. And the Lord went over and he prayed and he said, Father, I, I pray that you'd help this, this, this cup pass for me. You know the agony there's at over there in Gethsemane? And he come back and there was Peter asleep. And he said, you better get up. You better get up. You better get up. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. You know what he is saying? He was saying, Peter, there's some bad stuff coming. And if you ain't prayed up, you're gonna fall. I'm saying to you this morning, who think everything's all right in your life, and you think since all your bills are paid, and life is good, like you all love to say, and everybody, I'm telling you right now, you better pray now. You better spend some time in prayer. You better get in your prayer closet and pray, cause just around the corner, things could change really, really quick. The Lord told him three times, you're going to deny me. And, he, and the Bible said men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just, it's a shame that we have to nearly somebody get killed or somebody almost die before we'll pray. You better pray when things are going good. You better pray when the bills are paid. You better pray uh, when everything's all right. You better pray, you better pray. We, we in our churches today, they, they over-organize and under-agonize. I mean, used to, churches would get in the prayer closet and agonize with God. Now we think, well, we'll organize. We'll organize this, we'll organize that, and we'll organize this, we'll organize this. Nothing wrong with a little bit of organization, but I'll tell you, you better have some agonization too, if it is such a word. You better learn how to pray. You better learn how to pray. John Wesley, the great preacher, and David Brainerd, and Henry Martin, and Finney and Whitfield, and Spurgeon and Moody, every person who's ever impacted the world for the glory of God was a person of prayer. I'm telling you, you better learn how to pray. I've got a prayer closet up above our bedroom, and I go. I was up there that last night, and uh, I get down, and uh, I was up there, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and then I woke up, and it was like 15 minutes later. And a lot of people say, well, see there, that didn't do no good. Oh, that's where you're wrong, buddy. You know, I look at our father up in heaven. He looks, he says, look at that poor little old thing down there. Can't even, I believe I'll just bless him. And he dumps a blessing out on me this morning because he knows my heart. Buddy, I want to pray. Listen, you better pray. You better pray for your kids. Bad time's coming. You better pray. You, you may be healthy this morning and in your right mind and have money in the bank. That could all change by this time tomorrow morning. A neglect of prayer. As soon as you think you've got it, something will happen to show you you ain't got it. Number three, Peter had indecision. In verse number 54, the Bible said he followed them afar off. He couldn't make up his mind whether they wanted to stick with Jesus or not. Now, before, before this, during the three and a half years, he was a fisherman, you know. And he followed the Lord. Jeremy, help me just a second here. And I'm going to let Jeremy represent the Lord. Stand up there just a second. Uh, he's going to represent Jesus, and, and I'm going to be Peter, okay? You go down through there feeding 5,000, raising dead people. Man, old Peter, he wanted to be right here. He, wanted to be, he watched every move he made. He was like this. Feed that. There's 5,000 right there. Uh, and uh, and uh, he, he, fed, he fed the multitude. Amen. He, he, he raised the dead. There's one right there. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and, and Peter followed him he wanted to watch every move Jesus made he was like this and people said you really know Jesus yeah I walked right beside him all day today I seen him do miracles Woo! that's, that's the way some of y'all used to follow the Lord then when things got bad stay right there just a second the Bible said he followed afar off let me say it he didn't completely quit he just followed way back. All right, go do, go do some more miracles. Peter was like this, hiding over here behind a tree. You going back in sin? No, I ain't going back in sin. He's the way, truth, and lie. Well, you ain't following him like you used to. Well, I ain't quit. Quit judging me. 
and he just sort of followed him afar. That'll get you in trouble, y'all. You know what he better do? He better run back over here and say, I'm going to get this close to you, Jesus. Not that close. <laughs> We're just friends. Uh, listen, amen. He said, I want to get that close to you, Jesus. I want to be right beside you. I want to be right beside. And I'm telling you that this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that'll get you in trouble. The very second, everybody listen, the very second you think, I can handle it. I can lay my Bible down. I can not go to church. It won't affect me at all. You're headed for a fall. Mark it down. Nobody's strong enough to follow God and not be close to him. Indecision. You're like a, he, he, he said, are you going to quit? No. Are you going to follow him? No. Are you going to quit? No. Are you going to follow him? No. It's like I was driving up the road the other day. I hate to hit anything. I hate to run over stuff. A squirrel will run out. Them stupid squirrels. They say, when they say you squirrel brain, it's for a reason. A squirrel, have you ever had a squirrel, you see it coming, there comes the crazy thing, and it gets right out there in front of you, and then it stops. And their head, like that, you know? And, and you think, well, the idiot gonna go, and you don't know if you should swerve, <laughs> you know, and, and you slow down, and right about the time you think you've been, it'll go right underneath your car. That's the way Peter was doing. That's the way Peter was doing. He couldn't make up his mind. I mean, he's like Charles Worley said, said some people's got, they're in and out, in and right with God now, so they've got the whole war so slick, they're like a mole. They can't stay in or out. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he had indecision. Amen? Now listen, there's going to come a time in your life if you're really following the Lord that it's going to cost you something. This name it, claim it, everything's great, everything's wonderful, God is hip and cool is a false gospel. If you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be a time when it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you friends. It's going to cost your testimony sometimes with the world, the bad testimony. It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you. Follow him. He loved it when he was feeding 5,000. Man, we're eating hush puppies and catfish and, 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 and all kind of good stuff and filet. Man, we got ketchup and french fries. Now it's going to cost you. You're going to lose your life. And then number four, the fear of man. In 58... The Bible talks about it. He was afraid of what people would think about him. You don't... See, public opinion changed real fast. They're getting ready to kill him. Are you, you're not a follower of his, are you? Whew. Man, I liked it when things was going our way. I liked it when we was walking through and they were laying palm branches in the road and glory to God and, the, and people was getting saved and the blind man was healed and the Pharisees hid their face in shame. Now... Jesus out there in the dark in the weeds and Judas betrayed him and we get killed over this. Literally killed. Our life to, you say that never happened here preacher. It's happened in Sudan. It happens all over the world. There's Christians under persecution. I'm going to show you some of that next Sunday morning. Lord willing how they're killing Christians all over this world. Sometimes it'll cost you. It'll cost you and he, he had the fear of man. In other words you don't go to his church, do you? God, that's a little too strong. We like our church. We don't, he don't say, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall say, how about hell fire and stuff? Our church don't talk about that. You go there, and Peter got scared. Chickened out. Number five, and I'm done. Evil companions. The Bible said that he went to the high priest's office and sat with the servants. And then the Bible said in verse 55, they sat and warmed themselves. You know what Peter did? He went over there and it was cold that night. And the servants of the high priest had built a fire over here and they was all sitting around talking. And he went over there and sat down with them and warmed himself. You know why the Holy Spirit put that in the Bible? He warmed himself by the enemy's fire. He warmed himself by the enemy's fire. Are you listening? That's in there for a reason. That's to teach you. Do you study the Bible? 
Do you study the Bible or just watch TV all the time? Get your Bible down and study. The Bible said he warned himself at the enemy's fire. In other words, he said, uh, I'm not following Jesus. Jesus is over there, and I'm going to warm myself. You want that translated real quick? Translated, it, it gets like this. When you get to the place where when you warm yourself how they warm their self, that's when you're headed down. When you get your kicks the way they get their kicks, when you have to go to a country and western dance hall on Saturday night to get a thrill like they get their thrills, when you have to get the latest rap and rock album to get your kicks like they get theirs, when you have to get high, when you have to get to be able to feel the same thing here, you are warming yourself by the enemy's fire. You understand that? Right. Folks, do you realize, do you realize they, he was, they were sitting there can you imagine what them servants was talking about? It wasn't the weather. One of them said, man, I heard, man, I heard they're going to kill all of them. Yeah, they got him. They got him. Well, he's been going around here three and a half years blaspheming the priest and everything else, trying to start a new religion. That's what he gets. And Peter's sitting there listening to all this. You hang around with that bunch on Saturday night that ain't living right and partying and getting drunk and all that, first thing you know, all you'll think about is bad stuff, bad stuff, bad stuff, and you'll chicken out. You'll chicken out. I don't want to hang around a bunch of people that's talking about getting rid of the Lord. I don't want to hang around people where his name is not mentioned or ever honored. People, do you realize we are living in a time when there's more Y'all know that there was more death by overdose on drugs last year, 2016, than ever, ever in the history of our country? 60,000 overdose deaths on drugs were in 2016 the most ever. It is now the leading cause of death among people under 50 is drugs. That means if you're under 50 today, the number one killer is opiates, pills, needles, pills. He ain't playing. The devil ain't playing, people. It's not a joke. You say, well, I'll just get a little high once in a while. And all that. Listen, he'll mess. He'll, that's what them, them 60,000 people said. Them fentanyl patches and stuff are like 30 times more powerful and more dangerous than heroin. And people are dying at the rate of 90 per day. 90 per day in this country. That means today, 90 people in this country will die. 60,000. Uh, uh, Two-thirds of the population of Burke County will die this year total because of drugs. You know why? Evil companionship. I'm going to make a statement and I'm going to say a thing or two and I'm done. It makes all the difference the people that you hang around. Whoever you hang around, the Bible teaches it. The Bible says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You hang around a bunch of nuts, you're going to be a nut. You hang around a bunch of people raising cane, you're going to raise cane. You have a bunch of people getting high, you'll be getting high. You say, well, I'm just trying to reach them. No, they're going to reach you. The Bible says, come out from among them. Be you separate, saith the Lord. Listen, you know what Peter should have done? Peter said, things that are higher, things that are nobler. These are the Lord my side. See, you guys, I'm going to go die with him if that's what it takes. But he went and he cursed and did not God. He is headed for a fall. Because they hang around with the wrong crowd. There's people sitting in here this morning. If you don't get a grip and run to Jesus Christ before it's too late, you are headed for a fall. You say, well, what about my friends? They, they ain't your friends. They ain't your friends. I was listening to Phil Kidd preach. And he was talking about when he got saved. He got saved about the same time I did. And he said when he was still in high school, he got saved. And he said he wouldn't go to his senior prom, wouldn't go to the prom. He said he knew what they was going to do. They was going to all get drunk and go somewhere and 
living fornication all night and sin and all kinds of wickedness. And he said, I'm, he said, I'm not going to go. He said, I just ain't going to go. And he said, I spent my senior prom night at my house in the bedroom by myself listening to long play albums of the inspirations. 18 years old. And he said, I sat there and I listened to inspiration and tears come down my cheeks. And I said, thank God. I've been, you said, oh, that's crazy. Well, he's in the ministry right now doing great and some of them people probably ain't even alive, probably dead and in hell right now. It makes a difference who you hang around and the people you hang out with. You're headed for fall. Some of y'all, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I have no idea. I have nobody in mind. But somebody in here needs to break off something or you're headed for a fall. Let's stand by our head for prayer.